gentlemen welcome into the collegiate star league what hey. is up how's it going guys <laughs> we are ready to go live into our round of 16 playoffs here at the collegiate star league spring is well underway so it's spring break for pretty much everybody right now apparently like everybody has a two-week vacation as far as i know but uh we got a really cool match coming up because we had a lot of round of 32 games uh that have finished up and kind of some of the lower seeds have been knocked out and the remaining 16 are here and standing and two of them are going to be playing tonight in ut austin versus cal poly pomona should be a fun match joining me tonight we have an interesting Jerry Rig of a triple cast setup. We have Joey J. Zilk from Colorado right now. Ramon, yes. what's up, man? Are, are, are you I, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm officially uh, broadcasting here from the vein of Colorado. So I'm traveling, uh, hanging out with my friends. We stopped by. We've been here for three days. Got to go shoot some guns. I got to shoot a real-life P250, which was pretty awesome. And so it's, it's been just a cool experience. Lots of wildlife, just good time. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, I'm a little out of touch. I'm streaming from my 4G, and, you know, we're jury-rigging it. I think that's the best way to put it. We are definitely MacGyvering yeah. tonight. And yeah. it's fun. You know, it adds a little flair, right? It makes it a little, uh, a little yeah. more interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, and sure. Now, you know, flair, connectivity. Flair, you know, whatever. Mike. Whatever. Hiccups, yeah, lag, like, disconnects, you know. Exactly. It wouldn't be CSGO if everything went smoothly. I, I've been saying that since the beginning, you know. If, if it started on time, then it's starting early as far as I'm concerned, you know. Now, in, in <laughs> it's the just, just CSGO things. Yeah, now in the background, we do have also Mr. What's Wrong. I don't know. I think he's just listening in, in into the game. Yeah. He, in game I, I, too. he did private message me. He's having some issues, so he may be just out for this game, and we'll try and get him back for uh, for game two, yeah. um, see if he can get his problem situated. But we, we, it actually, it's going to become down to a pretty like, close knife for Cal Poly. They actually win with 10 HP and complete. So, um, you know, just the the classic trade kills. It looks like Cal Poly. Yeah, they are actually going to opt for that T side on Cobble. So we've kind of talked about it in CSL how it's a little more CT sided. Mm -hmm. um, even though the meta kind of has evolved to the point where T's are expected to get maybe eight or nine rounds, um, but I think this is is coming down to more of a comfortable thing, right? I think. Terror, or you want to start on that T side because maybe you are not warmed up as a team necessarily, right? Everyone just came from their classes. You haven't had a lot of time to rehearse your strats necessarily. So you just want to start out full aggression, just group up trades, be able to just run and gun with that Glock and just take advantage of the running accuracy. And uh, you, you don't get punished as much for being caught out of position as you do, as say, on the CT side, which is why we're seeing them just offer straight armor across the board. No utilities, you're just going straight for that silenced USP. He's just going to be holding angles. And Jordan, he's going to start with the entry here towards B-Halls, and that's going to be actually the lurk 
So CTs get a lot of information here. Uh, they're going to be able to fall back out of B-Long and Fruble actually re-aggressing. So there's going to be a lot of information gained here for the defense. Uh, they're going to actually be able to spot out a T here uh, above the drop zone. And they actually catch him off guard. So the little bait and switch here in the halls. And T-Side actually getting two kills now. So CT's trying to find these openings after losing that first kill uh, at B-Long. But unable to find anything. And, well, they're not going to be able to rotate in time either. Condog, he's going to have to hold down this site pretty well if he's going to want to uh, be able to retake this. And luckily he's been able to find the first kill. Finds a second one and actually Balto chiming in with two. So that's going to be a huge play now as Otter chimes in. So all he had to do was get those two kills, holds down the bomb site, and they were unable to take advantage of that two-man advantage early in the round. And well, now it's down just as a zone, one on three, and they're just playing patiently. He actually does peek here from Statue, and they're going to re-peek here from Foursquare as well, giving kind of an unnecessary opening. So 25 seconds on the clock, switches for the Glock. Going to see if he can find something. He has to make a play really swiftly, but they're going to just be very passive, not giving him anything. He does peek here from Dwayne Johnson, gives him a little bit of opening. He's going to have to reload. Only 15 seconds left. He's going to have to plant if he wants to uh, extend this round. Goes for the fake. They're just playing very patiently, not giving him any openings, but now it's down to a 1v1. 3 HP left here on U Texas. He goes for the plant. He tries to fake. But oh, he's he got to get the kills. Oh. Get the seat. He's actually still win that round with just m seconds left on the clock. That someone's got to give us an instant replay. That came down to <laughs> point one of a <laughs> second. Like, I don't like, even know how he got himself ESL? back in that. I was gonna say, can we phone an ESL? But like, yeah, we need a replay. Jesus, that, he's just like, wow. If what, that's what, the what, first what, round what, of this what, game, how is this gonna? I don't even know. I. That was a great decision, <laughs> though. You have to admit, that was a great decision. He realized he that didn't have sick. enough time to plant. He had to get the kill. He wouldn't have gotten the plant down in time. So, really smart awareness there, just to say, you know, screw it, get the pistol out, try to get the kill. Better than not to, you know, take the plant. But, uh, Otter having a little bit of fun over here, dealing with a bunch of Cal Poly Pomona players. Texas gonna rotate on over here on A site. Already we have some C, uh, some of the T's getting close to uh, plant position, but already Balto defending really well. We're gonna be having to watch this whole entire game. I feel like Balto and Otter, they're huge players for UT Austin. Big Good shooters. Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of speaking of Balto and the highlight reels, we had him actually on the highlight reel. If you guys haven't checked it out on youtubecom league we opened up our Asus ROG highlight reel section. So if you guys want to check out some CS:GO highlights from the playoffs. Head on over there. Balto's definitely part of it. He got a nice 4K that Will ended up speaking through the whole time. I don't know if you remember that one from like Mirage, where you got where you got like a 4 yeah. 4K 4K. You guys are just like bantering away, just like not paying attention. It was so funny. Just no, no, no. <laughs> I love it because sometimes you're out. you're spectating someone else across the map, yeah. And you know someone on the opposite side finds a 3K. And you're like, what just happened? Balto, slow down. But yeah, they actually got the pl plant down Cal Poly that round, so that's gonna be a pretty pretty big opening uh, allow them to kind of rehalf by again get some get some pistols a little bit of utility they have three smokes so i imagine they're going to go for some sort of setup uh, especially as they're grouping towards b halls here um yeah it looks like stray is actually going to go for the smoke here he's lining up here at post and he's going to go for the smoke that's it's going to bank off here and that's going to give him a smoke that'll allow him to push onto site get multiple angles and uh you know, be able to catch the CTs off guard a little bit. So I actually really like this execute. It's really good for a save round. It's very cheap and affordable. Uh, it can be extremely powerful. So yeah, that'll, that'll go cover drop, flashbang coming in here from the CTs. And it actually was a little bit of a flub smoke, unless that's potentially to, to get that boost here from tree. But they're actually finding two entries. Fruit Bowl, he's gonna have to slow down here. He finds the smoke kill, insane game sense, good communication from his team. And well, that's gonna leave Jordan here in a 1v2. Only 11 HP in an M4, but uh, this this is probably the man you want. We've seen Jordan in the past just go huge in these clutch situations. So I'm interested to see today uh, how the teams are going to pick their side, sort of where they want to rush. When we started the season off, especially in the kind of the early springtime, a lot of these teams favored heavily the B site, but I feel like after so much practice and having to play this map almost what feels like week in, week out, a lot of these teams have began adjusting and really getting a good hold of B site. So I'm going to see how, you know, somebody like a CPP might work the A site a little bit better. They have good shooters and they have talent, um, especially yeah. when, you, when, you're, when you're looking at like Zazone, you're looking at Spiffy, Jordan, like they're going to be able to make the shots. But right now in terms of like smoking off and timing it out, most of the teams like UT Austin seem to have a pretty good hold of it. So you're going to have to show some versatility. You can't exactly cherry pick a site like they used to be able to. And, we're kind of and we saw them doing right it. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, we actually saw that uh, a little bit earlier out of uh, out of Cal Poly with the Tech 9 rush, right? They just pushed up through mid, 
just got that one smoke at double doors and they were able to find two kills and a bomb plant. So the fact that they were able to find the site was pretty huge, but a quick little exchange here at B long, that's going to at least cause a little bit of a rotate out of the CTs. They're, they're a little bit wary that uh, maybe some aggression could be coming out and they're not spotting anything here towards A, but that's exactly what the terrorists want. So they're going to be slowly lurking their way here towards the A-Halls with the bomb. So they're trying to throw this fake and that little exchange trade towards B might have been enough, but it looks like uh, one of the players here is falling back, becoming a little wary. Balto, he's, he doesn't like to fall for uh, over rotations. He likes to just hold his ground, hold his sight down, and you know, if it is a bomb plant and he has to retake, he's completely comfortable in that situation. So he's playing a little bit of an off angle. This is pretty famously used by Hiko. And uh, yeah, this actually might cause the rotate as well because that's only one kill and they don't see anything else towards B. So they're going to go just try and get a crossfire here on the A site. Balto playing a really passive angle, but he actually gets pre-fired oh. zone. Finding that swift kill, but only a one-man advantage for the CTs, and finally Jordan able on the lurk to get the trade, and that's going to bring it down to a 2v2 bomb down as well, and uh, they're at least a aware of this connector player, and Otter, he's kind of stuck, <laughs> pinned in here in the Jordan, halls. Jordan, I think, and... is a little more stuck here than uh, even Otter is. Now Otter in a bit of a troublesome position with an op in close corridors. Uh -uh. Bring, bring, bring in a, bring in a, oh, well, never mind. Bring in a big gun to the small fight right there. Jeez. Yep, Otter down to a 1v1 now. He has to swiftly retake this. He has a kit, so he has the time. He opts for the stick, but he goes for the fake, and now time is running out. The T hat it will go for the peak and complete, winning that 1v1. Able to get the 2k for the round. He goes out, but it's not really important at this point. They just need to get that bomb plant, or get that round win, rather, and just start building that economy. Um, and most importantly, start to weaken uh, the economy here of U Texas Austin, because... Um, they just bought an op, and that was a huge investment. So we're kind of seeing that come back to bite them. Three pistols and a shotgun. So they are down and out, uh, opting for a little more utility than uh, than the firepower. And we'll, we'll see if that pays off. Stray with the Tech-9 as well. So both teams uh, on the bitter ends of this money, and uh, on their money rather. And whoever wins this round is definitely going to uh, uh, get a consecutive round in a row and start to take that lead. Well, we're looking to see if Asim, he, he's going to try to come up here um, up into B long, see if he can get maybe a little bit of pick off or better position, but they're doing a good job right now holding him off. I'll, I'll actually give props to Cal Poly Promote, even though they're playing very passive and very slow, they're doing a good job of finding pickoffs and positioning and making, I feel like, the right moves or attempts at right moves, especially that last run right there. Very carefully could have gone B, but eventually ended up rotating back over to A, and We've seen that be a big problem with a lot of the teams here in the CSL is like the longer they delay, the worse off they end up being. But Cal Poly Pomona seems like a very experienced and an, an experienced team with shooters and that can communicate. So it makes it a lot easier them, for them to execute some of these strategies. But already small little pickoff right there by Asim might force him back over to A. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that they're just like hanging around drop down right now. This is such a bad area to fight in. Or to just hang out. <laughs> they're just hanging out doing yeah. flashes. Oh no! Flash themselves and they're gonna drop down and on the other side there's Baldo with a swag waiting for him and pops him with him. Azum though goes down to the zone and that opens up the whole entire B site. Uh oh. Big redeem. Yeah, that's good. Right now. That's pretty huge, and they only have pistols, so they uh, this is not really the ideal retake weapon. Uh, thankfully, they have a couple flashes to work with and a Molotov to at least uh, pull them off the site and uh, you know narrow down the terrace into the same choke point. But Kondong, he's going in fast. He's able to get the flank. He finds the first 5-7 kill. Ooh. Goes for the spray. Wild Flash finds a second one. Now it's down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Complete hiding behind Foursquare, trying to see if he can uh, anticipate the push here from Condog, and he's able to at least get an M4. He goes for the first tap. He has a kit as well, so he's asked to see if Condog's going to go for the peak, but he's not going for it. Five seconds on the clock. He has to stick it. He has no choice, but he gets peaked by Complet, and that's going to be another round for Cal Poly Pomona, taking a second round and destroying the economy here, the CT, so uh, putting them in a very favorable position to get this third round. Just like scheduling CSGO teams for our broadcasts, patience is a virtue. Complete. Or complete. Very nice job. Very nice. Very patient play. Indeed. Paid off. Well played, well, three by. to two right now for UT Austin, but Cal Poly Pomona are definitely recovering after the first initial couple rounds right now. Mm -hmm. Look at this. There's all CTs here towards A site. <laughs> They're reading the CTs like a book. They have no yeah, investment, fine. but at least they have the range to use these pistols <laughs> to their advantage. Only finding one kill. It's a slaughter for Cal Poly. Insane that they actually were only able to get the one and. Uh, I'm out of breath from that play. I was totally expecting the CTs <laughs> to find something more than that. And, well, that's a way to get a round over with, you know, just... 
quickly get right back into the bat round, get those Colts on hand, and uh, just get right back into the game. So interesting to see the four silencers as well out of U Texas. Uh, Definitely the meta has shifted back kind of towards the silencer. You know, Valve tries to make a nerf, slows down the fire rate, makes um, you know makes it a little more expensive, and all these soft nerfs always bring people back no matter what. It's just such a consistent weapon. Uh, in the heat of battle, you don't have to worry about the recoil so much. You can just shoot that laser beam, get those headshots, and it's just interesting to observe these uh, the higher teams here as we're in the RO16 and see that meta shift back towards the silenced goal. Well... We almost had a really quick rush into A site, but very patient play. Cal Poly Pomona probably would have been really bad off trying to run right into Balto. That would have ended up being a really bad decision. But slowly lurking their way back towards B, as well as also UT Austin repositioning themselves. Uh, I mean, what do you what do you like as a, if you if you're a strat caller like how do you function and work on this map? You've seen that A kind of works for you a, a little bit. You're able to slowly control and kind of pace yourself. How do you how do you approach this map like mentally? Like t talk to me. Like how, what's your mentality going into a big map like this? Yeah, it kind of comes down to giving up. You don't want to give up the a halls, that that danger area, but it's really dangerous if you uh, commit to that aim battle because you generally cannot set yourself up to get trades. And we've seen him kind of give it up right now, and that's where the bomb's heading towards. So Spiffy, he's going to go for the Molotov, and well, if you can get this information early, your team can make your team can rotate in time and. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Jordan getting the lurk kill and Otter from behind the fence, able to find two before going down. So that's going to put the CTs here in a favorable advantage. Cal Poly down a man. They are going to get the bomb down, but uh, they are going to just commit to this aggression and see if they can find something. Yeah, Asim trying to come up here as well as also with the help of a teammate. Is that Condog? Might have been three ball goes down. Asim drops down, gets one shot off, but once again, complete right in position and right below. Uh, what is that? What would that position be called right there? Right outside of the... Oh, below balcony? Yeah. Below balcony? Is it below um, balcony? I feel like it's different. Yeah, no, they're... I think it was named after... I want to say it was MBK that that made a lot of plays in that position, but MBK has quite... He has a lot of positions. You know, they call the, ca the fence side on cash MBK, and, you know, every map has a get right just because everyone loves get right. So <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it's called get right or forest or something. I, I All I do is remember that play is when Freiburg pulled that 1v2 clutch off, and... That was pretty awesome to watch, but actually CT is able to find two kills with the P250 here in drop zone, so that's going to be a good amount of damage, all things considered. Dropping three rifles on a save. Uh, you did a kind of a half investment, Otter with the CZ armor, uh, you know, trying to even out his economy to make it so uh, they, they can get the same full buy in the following round. And Well, he's able to pick up P90 with the CZ, shot, finds Otter. a swift headshot, able to pick up the AK-47 as well, and... Well, that Molotov is going to push him out of place. He's going to have to fall back and uh, probably just save the armor AK. That's about a $4,000 investment. Definitely worth, but he's in clutch mode. He's pre-firing everything. He wants to go for this. And, well, no head armor and a flash. That's going to be enough uh, for the IGL to call it back. Tell him to save. They need as much money as they can at this point. And, well, fortunately for them, they're going to reach that max rent loss bonus. Five rounds in a row now for Cal Poly. And... Uh, that's definitely a, a, what they needed at this point. Break that CT economy and force them into that very stressful situation of if we don't win this round, we're going to have to save again. And it uh, puts a lot of pressure on you. You you tend to not make as big a plays and do do some, do some those peaks that you're comfortable with because uh, you, you don't want to risk losing the round, right? So you are you tend to play more safe and uh, play the more cookie-cutter plays, go for the more flow, ch flow chart counter-strike rather than um, the, the more aggressive and unpredictable style that we see from a lot of these teams yeah i mean again i think it's just part of it is because it's cobblestone it's actually become like an awkward staple of like the csl <laughs> we, for, some, for, some, for some reason like this map has been overplayed like compared to everything else that we've seen so i feel like a lot of the teams are well adjusted for that and i think that also contributes to what you're talking about sort of that kind of a, that flow chart play but uh round number nine right now in Otter wants to open it up, knocks over Stray with an off, and that's going to cause some troubles trying to get into B-side. They smoke it off as well, so they might have to reconsider. They're all bunched up kind of here by drop down, or uh, close to long B, and you can see Balto and Asim beginning to work their way a little bit further through A, so they're probably going to have enough information knowing that they're going to be coming B, and as the smoke fades, the zone eats a, eats a bullet. Oh. Jordan eating one. Oh, oh. Hyper X50, get out of here. Slow down. What is going chill on right now? Just chill. One more. Just take a breather. Oh. He needs the 4K for the round. 
He needs the ace. Will you give this man the ace? He's got the 4K. He's looking for the last one. He's definitely hungry for it. And uh, unfortunately, Condog grabbing the last kill. But 4K out of honor for the round, completely locking down that B long site. And well, if if anything's gonna scare you from making a play, I think I think he just did it. And uh, I I fully expect some sort of A aggression or. Um, at least a fast play towards B in the next round. I can't see them going for a slow execute like that after getting shut down so so convincingly. So it's like we need, we need, we need more 10 man like A rushes <laughs> coming out just, <laughs> just duking out everybody get shotguns, P90 swags and MP7s and just rush away. But Here it is, here's that fast B. play. <laughs> Here comes the smokes, they're just gonna... They only have three smokes on uh, on hand, so they can't really smoke off most of the site, but they're just going to drop down aggressively. If they can cross over on the site before getting executed, they can actually get multiple angles, and this is going to be really hard for the CTs to hold. But Balto getting another kill and Bomb going down, so at the very least they'll be able to buy an extra round, but um, they have multiple angles, and this HE, that's going to take care of Jordan. Now there's only two Ts left. Flashbang's going out, going to be able to stall just a little bit longer. Split the CTs apart and complete. It's up to him. He has to make the play here. He's walking around Foursquare, but unfortunately a sensor, it looks like he got caught on something, Gets a, <laughs> drops a little bit too low, and well, he finds the kill anyway, puts himself into a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it looks like he's just going to jiggle peek around this corner, try and bait him out, and perfect play by complete, just <laughs> out gaming Otter in that 1v1. And that's, that's where you really just have to have balls to steal, and you know, convince the other team that you're going to commit and catch him off guard. So he, he jiggle peeked him, forced the CT to stand still, and, well, caught him crouching. So caught him with his uh, pants down, and perfect play, actually, by that in that 1v2 clutch. Even though his, it looked like his mouse sensor got, you know, there was a hair or something, it, it just completely dropped to the floor, which was very, very obscure. But, you know, he wins the 1v2 anyway. And it's nerves. Yeah, the nerves. Man. It's, like, it's, it's like me when I when I spot somebody, I get so excited. Like, I have my sensitivity too high, so I, like, jiggle. <laughs> my mouth just flies off. I mean, I get too excited. It happens, man. It happens. Could have, could have been the case. But 4-6 for Cal Poly Pomona. Or, sorry, 6-4 for Cali Poly, Cal Poly Pomona. UT Austin going to have to make a little bit of a comeback here as we get to the later rounds of the first half. If you guys are just tuning in, this is a great time to, you know, tweet out those links, share out our stream, let everybody know that we have playoffs going on right now. We're going to be, of course, heading into playoffs on Saturday and next Wednesday as well. So lots and lots of fun content coming up. So be sure to share all that and continue supporting the CSL. As obviously, we appreciate it. Now, uh, somebody that might appreciate like this. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to appreciate this A rush right now. They're going to just aggress straight into the halls. And the CTs have just completely given it up. And I was about to say something about Cal Poly. They've had a lot of success towards A because, well, not a lot of uh, map control is taken by the CTs. So they have to commit to just staying their sights and holding them down, not able to really rotate and premeditate the pushes. And the lack of information gathered uh, from Austin is, is really allowing these kind of plays. And again, they have two CTs just locked down at A. They have no information. And well, the bombs completely rotate towards the B. And well, the jig is up. They're actually going to catch him off guard, at least getting one kill from... Uh, in the hands of Spiffy and last player here in the zone he's gonna go for the AK finds the first spray but he has to plant the bomb only four seconds on the clock and it looks like they're gonna go for the immediate push he actually spots the barrel of the sniper through that uh, right through the tree so he's able to drop down ace him to 35 and well he's kind of stuck at least they're aware of position but it looks like they're not even oh. watching it but Otter finds the flick shot Onto the zone. Very nice play by him, and well, we're gonna see him get back that. into this like, game. Like you have to appreciate yeah, that. the zone had good movement. Like made almost all the right moves, adjusting, planted right away, got it in time. It was a really risky position, but god damn, Otter is hitting some shots right now. Feeling it definitely, and especially keeping that off. I would expect a continuance of that. But five six, five six. We're moving on. We're moving on. Um, part of you guys. Otter, um, Otter is seventeen and eight right now. Yeah, I know, right? It's, it's so they're down. They're losing right now by a round. Yet he's still just hard carrying the team right now, and that's really important to have that person you can rely on to be that consistent. Every game I've watched Otter, he's he's been able to clutch and and pull off plays that. Uh, really, really shouldn't be possible, and that's what's really important for his team right now. Obviously, we're seeing an execute come into play. Couple suits of armor and two flashes. So Stray, he's going to be the uh, the utility player. He's going to support his team, flash him in, so they can uh, take this drop area. And they're just waiting for the smoke to dissipate before they aggress. And uh, it looks like they, this is just a classic Tech Nine B drop. 
Uh, very, very popular by the likes of Fnatic and Astralis, and they're just going in getting mode. Fruit Bowl with the triple, and in a matter of two seconds, the round is over. Fruit Bowl getting uh, four kills that round, actually, so Balto uh, chiming in to finish it up, but just a perfect spray down, and <laughs> they spent all that time setting it up to just have the round end in seconds, so uh, kind of unfortunate. I think it was cute. They were just all hang crouched, hanging out right there and drop down, just yeah. waiting. It's like, <laughs> it's like one of the cutest setups of like all of CSGO, everybody's just hanging out. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see here. Uh, they're splitting up once again, and really it's coming down a lot to Otter. It's either coming down to Otter being able to hold him off or ace him to holding him off, or if potentially this is owner complete could actually get an entry and uh, open up some of the sides for him. So as we see right right now, UT Awesome getting to progress through B. They're getting a little bit of a better position earlier than they usually can. Actually, who was that dropping down? Was that a Molly? Is that Stray? Yeah, I, I Stray missed almost that. Yeah, Stray almost dropped from a Molly down to 20. Jeez. That's not good. Yeah, Otter playing the halls uh, very passively, trying to see if he can find anything here from danger. Um, obviously, he has to be aware of getting flanked, so he's just going to fall back from long, uh, give up that angle, play play the kind of guardian op, just be the one lockdown player on A and rely on the rest of your team to be that, that rock-solid B-hold, which tends to be one of the harder sites to retake, obviously, and hold in general. Uh, it can be hard to hold against Tech 9s in general, so uh, having four players at B, pretty standard setup, especially when you have the one opper. An op can do so much damage at A before they even get the site, and here comes the execute Spibby, finding one kill before they get traded, and well, it looks like they're going to be able to wrap up the site, but Asim actually chiming in as well, finding the kill here from behind Rock, and... Well, this is going to be hard. Bomb in front of the smoke. They're going to have to recover this, and it looks pretty much impossible. Spiffy, 14 HP, gets dropped by the Tech 9 in the end by Balto. And, well, that'll be a 7 6. U Texas Austin coming back three rounds now in a row. And, well, that's going to be enough to, to break the economy again for Cal Poly. Brutal amount of damage done by Nades and just being able to uh, holding off their opponents. I mean, they were, they were hitting some shots and hitting some bullets on their opponents through the smokes, but really nice timing and on the defensive side from UT Austin. I think that was a key right there. They were able to get the Nades, the mollies off in time, and they took a lot of dam. Uh, sorry, Cal Poly Pomona took a lot of damage. Jesus, Otter with a double. Mom, get the camera. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> What, what I is told you. Right now? Otter, Otter is just we're destroying oh, us right now. More, more carnage. Can you dig it? Give him the ace. Just give him one ace. Denied. Uh, oh no, he got. He's dead. <laughs> he's deadered. <laughs> he got dropped. He he tried to find that fifth one. Tech nine, no kill for you. And well, complete actually finding a second one. So uh, you know, chiming back in a little bit. Swaps for the AK. Just gonna go for the more utility weapon. And well, that kind of just goes to show what I was talking about with Otter. Like you can have a single opera locked down A, and he got four kills before they could even make it to the site. Obviously, it was a little bit of an eco bash and you know yada yada. But regardless, you know that can actually be unfavorable to have an op in the eco situation because you got pistol players just flying around corners. You got to hit some really hard. Uh, Flick shots more generally than if you're going against an AK steel. and you just have ball, you just have to have balls of steel, man. That's it. You just have to be, you have to be like, Duke, you just have Duke, to be like and, in any one v five scenario. You know, every round obviously. you start, fifteen seconds later, your whole entire team's dead. You're by yourself. You, you know what you got to do. Get that op out. Start flicking away, man. Make make some plays happen, right? Exactly. <laughs> you're just like counter strike. No. You're like no. You can win every one v five. Like you're like you know, you know end, end a game so with. Yeah. What what could be the maximum amount of kills in a game, excluding overtime? You know, five kills at always just one v five. Literally I'm, four I'm, bots I'm, on oh your. Oh god! I'm like you're gonna make me do math. Like I heard you guys do math. I'm like I'm not, I'm not gonna start that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna part. Uh, that. five times thirty. Oh five god, already. 150. Yeah, well, UCLA is good. Well, I math. well I thought it before you typed it. Okay. <laughs> I don't need your math shenanigans. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, here, here, <laughs> that, here's sadly, here's I was in calculus. Here, Three in or calc two in high school, and this is still the and all it. I'm a little, I'm washed up a little bit, you could say. It's okay, yeah. I can only count kills, assists, and deaths now. Like that, that's all esports has taught me. <laughs> like, I gotta do basic math. But Otter once again getting another shot through through there. God, that's such a hard place because as you're watching this, Otter is rotating to different sites as well. This is another big thing that UT Austin is doing that's part of their success. They're not allowing Cal Poly Pomona to predict where they're placing their players, somebody like Otter, and uh, that's really helping them out. They managed to sneak their way through uh, kind of mid, I guess. And they're trying to come up on A side, but we do have some defenses ready for UT Austin. Balto gets dropped down. We'll see how much Asim can do to stall him off, and does a pretty good job. Complete. 
Yeah, it looked like he was actually going to get a TK there, going for the spray uh, <laughs> through his opponent, but 9-6 in favor of U Texas Austin. Getting that five rounds in a row in the end really solidified their half, and, well, from what we've seen in CSL, probably an expected scoreline, uh, a little bit more favored towards CT. Um, you know, but in Counter-Strike, it goes either way. So I try not to put too much energy into the scoreline and whether it's TCT sided, it it really comes down to how they play. And well, I wasn't I wasn't actually too convinced by their CT side. They played a little more passive towards A halls, but it actually worked out for them. Otter pretty much locking it down single handedly uh, anytime a full rush came in in the late game. And well, that was pretty important. And now they're going for this aggressive A, pretty anti meta. Asim finding two kills as well. So uh, two CTs try to push mid and he, he catches them on the flank. So they stack three towards A and Unfortunately, it doesn't work out for them. Cal Poly just getting decimated in this fast, aggressive A push. Yeah, really quick execute. Looks like they kind of favored B a little bit more and sort of got caught a little bit by some of the lurkers and the, the play in that regards. But yeah, I don't think Jordan can do this kind of spot. Not with ESP. That's, that's way too much firepower. He's trying to get a pick off here and there. If he could drop one of them, that would be nice, but uh, no such luck. Jordan finally falls. 10 6 for UT Austin and. We'll see. I mean, hey, if they play a couple quick rounds here on T side, might be able to go up 12 6. I'll be in a fairly comfy position to kind of, you know, pace the game how they want to pace it. We obviously haven't seen really a lot of UT Austin side on uh, Cobble, but Cal Poly Pona has shown they're able to defend. They're able to adjust. They might need a little time, though, uh, especially with their lack of guns here. Oh, no. Oh, I thought the zone was about to walk right into that. Yeah, they have actually stacked here at, at the upper A hall, so they will have to be aware of that con dog. He's obviously going to be in charge of checking it. UMP actually not going to win in that situation, but the MAC-10 will clean up. Asim coming from the pincer side, and oh, they're just going to get pinned. And that's going to be pretty much the round for them. Stray gets dropped pretty quickly from the vents, and well, we're going to see Jordan. He's probably just going to look for an exit frag, see if he can do a little bit of damage. I'm sure he's aware that you know they've at least weakened the T side, and... Uh, it'll at least be softened up a bit for them to uh, them to work those exits. And it's pretty smart from Jordan. Going for a 1v4 in this situation when you're at a gun dis disadvantage is kind of just like suicide. You're just giving them money. And you may as well at least try and take some of their money and uh, force a rebuy in the following round. But they're actually going to exit here towards... Uh, the middle area, and he's not gonna he's not gonna be in luck this time. Just gonna save the five seven armor and uh, hope to do some more damage in the following round. Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, no, no point in taking him. I mean, on, honestly, even if he he should he could have probably at least maybe peeked out and see, seen what kind of damage he could have attempted to make. At least one or two kills would have been nice if he could have dropped some guns off of them. Like they just it just yeah. allows UT Austin to sit with more SMGs comfortably for another round. And uh, Jordan didn't really get much out of it. I mean, he did, he sits with the same pistol with no money, unfortunately. But we'll see how the CPP does here. Uh, they're splitting up a little bit more favored to B side, and that's a pretty good guess right now as we have a lot of the T's coming over here to B side. They're going through long, and we have a few set up and drop down. Got to be careful, though. There's a oh! lot waiting for him there. And ooh, could Jordan nice actually throw? getting... Yeah, able to find that 5-7 kill, so that 5-7 that he saved onto, at least netting a little damage and forcing the T's to rebuy some armor and utilities in the following round. But Bomb going down for ASIM, Stray only with a USP, uh, a man with nothing to lose. It could be the man to be most feared, actually, in a situation like this. But not a lot you're going to do with the USP, no armor. Uh, again, we're in this situation where he's just kind of looking for an exit, trying to do what Jordan did previously, and uh, just rack up you know, at least force the T's to rebuy and maybe rack up a little money for himself. But Asim, he's wary, so he might actually get caught off guard. But <laughs> he turns around straight turning time. the other direction. And he actually heard him drop. I think he got a little confused. Um, in the recent update, there's been, uh, there's been some kind of weird glitches with the sound. And a lot of people have been reporting it. There's been a lot of posts and threads from Reddit to HLTV to... Even the, you know, CSGO forums, the Valve CSGO forums that, of course, everyone uses. Um, but, yeah, a lot of people have been having weird directional problems. Um, do, do you know so hopefully the, that gets fixed. Do you know if some of the flash problems are still like a thing where there's just certain areas of the map where it's... Oh, yeah, the clipping. That, yeah, there, like there's some weird issues where it goes, like, under the ground. Yeah, just like... I, I guess it's something to do with the new textures, the way, they, the way they're developing new textures. Obviously, we're still using the Source engine and... They're kind of just putting a lot of, uh, they're trying to do a lot with the Source engine right now, and I think that's kind of for the transition 
um, uh, for the transition into Source Two, and it's uh, yeah. So it, it's it just they're kind of duct taping it instead of make fixing the entire problem, which is. For me, uh, I, 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 I dare you to go into the valve offices and be like, "Can you guys quit duct taping your issues?" And we just like, "What yeah, you say?" Like, "What'd you say to us?" Like, <laughs> please stop duct taping Counter Strike. That's uh, I got that analogy actually from uh, Sponge from the Renegades. He tweeted out they they changed the round timer to one fifty five and the bomb timer to forty, and he's like, "Stop duct taping your problems." Like Inferno was the only reason you'd need to change the round timers, and that's like just a duct tape a temporary solution. And, Would you, you know? But valve. The base developers, they've done great things for the game, and no no, no crap to them. It's just there's some issues that are, are kind of questionable, and, you know, I, I hope they can get those smoothed out over the next couple months. Well, I was going to say here, we'll, we'll, we'll go into the question here in a sec. Here comes Fruitball from uh, UT Austin. Awesome. going to try to take side. Good hold by Spooky, nice. dropping two of them. And that leaves Artiz in a weird position as, yeah, unfortunately, Otter all by himself. I don't know how well he can clutch and get sprayed right through the wall. I was actually going to ask, uh, speaking of the bomb timers, would you be, like, would you be favored or interested or, like, just even to attempt or try to have different bomb timers on different maps and, like, different round timers Ooh. on different maps? That, that honestly could be a better fix than the current <laughs> the current solution of just switching to 155. If they maybe just switch to 155 for Inferno, um, I could see that you know being a little bit better. Yeah, I'd actually be down to try it, especially if they based it off of you know they did tests and. Well, you know, maybe like, released like a beta client or something. Well, something like yeah. Dust too. It's a really familiar map. Force them to force people to play a little bit quicker. Don't have them, you know, sit back and tease, bomb, pop, and everything. Just, you know, re reduce the, reduce the match time or reduce the bomb time a little bit. Force a little faster play. And then something like Cobble, I think, it's one of these maps that having a bit of a longer time frame to work with is actually better for the game. It makes it more interesting to see how teams position and strategize. And oh, Ooh. Otter, there's your there's your strategy right there from Otter. How about, how about, yeah, no, no strategy. Get me out on flat. And how about one more? I'll, how I'll about another one? No, no problem. Bartender, GG. Give, me, give me one more. <laughs> give me one more. Yeah, one Stray's just oh. hopping away, like like a jackrabbit trying to get the f out of there. And Otter looking for his ace. In the words of Will, give this man the ace, please. Like, He's nah, been dying nah, for nah, it man. this entire game. Oh no, Balto! Ooh. Hold on just a second. He might still get his ace. Look at everybody start to chase after him right now. <laughs> you, you can see Otter desperately trying to get back and uh, maybe getting a kill, but uh, the angle doesn't look good for him. And uh, Otter, stop playing smart. Just yeah. chase him. He's playing. He's playing too careful. <laughs> he's playing smart Counter Strike. I just want to see him get the ace. <laughs> Play a little more risky, man. No, but they actually. It's pretty smart for him to not risk too much. No need to risk the soft. They need the money, obviously. Ut or Cal Poly rather. Uh, losing that round, being forced uh, on that on that round loss bonus, they're not going to have much to work with. Uh, probably two Famases and maybe two Colts and a pistol or something something along that lines. They might even opt for just a quasi buy um, and just hope Stray can do some damage with this M4. Maybe yeah. So they're they're just going for that quasi buy Deagle CZ57, and uh, they're probably going to hope to get an op in the hands of zone or at least he can drop an op in the following round. Well, this is good because I think this is smart with the quasi buy. They're going to favor just one site and see what they could do there. They're boosting up to long side of B and uh, already not too bad. Able to already get one shot off Otter, unfortunately, trying to stop that fun. <laughs> Drops the zone pretty quickly to trade back. Yeah, but no, 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 no fun around no, no fun around Otter, man. He's all he's all business right now. But obviously, I think they're realizing that it might be better for them to experiment and try to go A. Yeah, they don't see anybody really looking at them or watching them. So, safer play might be A. The retake positioning on A is, I would say, a little bit easier compared to B, at least. You have a little bit yeah. more opening. You have a little more room to work with. Otter, once again, wanting to just murder people today. Had a, had a, had a, had a bad day in class. Had a, had a midterm, a quiz. Just taking his anger out on Cal Poly Pomona right now. And uh, that just leaves yep complete, and that that's ball that's Balto and TT Austin for 14, man. Oof. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely quite a comeback for UT Austin. They were they were looking pretty weak in the first half. Um, obviously, they were down at one point. I believe it was six three. Um, they were able to claw back, get five rounds in the end of the half, and and turn themselves into a six nine half. So. 
Um, yeah, definitely seeing them come back into their form. Otter, uh, he's been on top of the scoreboard pretty much the entire game, so the consistency out of this player can definitely be uh, huge. But the rest of the team, you know, 12 to 15, definitely holding their own as well. So uh, by no means is this a uh, individual uh, just superstar role completely carrying the team. It's it's definitely UT Austin coming back into their form, and Cal Poly definitely uh, facing that potential match point and. Uh, they're going to have to win this and, and keep that ball rolling. What used to be called net magic, which I'd call now fanatic magic, they can just win from anything. They can come back in overtime. It doesn't matter if they're down 14-3. They'll just, they'll just win the game because they're fanatic. And, well, it's, we're going to have to see a little bit of that magic out of Cal Poly. Well, all right. Oh, hold, hold on just a sec. Oh, ASM, yeah, you might want to back up ASM right there. Well, let's see if they initiate an execute. I was going to say, before you cast or curse them, Put on your captain hat again, Joey J. Zilk, captain of the team. You're carrying Silverhead Logic over here. You're up 14-7. to 7. We've seen a lot of teams kind of spaghetti it up a little bit when they get this big of a lead and start allowing te opponents to get back into the game. What do you tell your team to, you know, keep the streak going, to clean, clean up the remaining two rounds cleanly as possible? What do you tell your team? Yeah, at, at this point, you need to just stick together and go for those trades, not try and make individual plays, but that's exactly what we're seeing. Uh, he actually pushed up slope com and actually caught Spiffy with his gun, not even in his hands. He had to switch to his M4 and still was able to find two kills before going down. So that's kind of the sloppiness you just talked about. They pushed up the A slope. Um, did, I don't even know if they smoked double doors. They seem, That seemed a, bit <laughs> a little bit sloppy there out of Austin. And, well, that could be... That could be uh, you know, a good example of what you had just asked. And I think at this point, you just got to stick together, play your own game. Don't worry about what they're doing. Just do what your team does best and try and clean this game up because obviously we're seeing uh, some superiority out of Austin and they just got to stick together. That's the important part in a game like this, uh, especially if you have the lead. Don't try and make individual plays. Don't go for the Stewie 2K push through smokes or what was originally called uh, the snacks, you know, where he'd, he'd do the classic right hand click. As soon as that update came, he uh, definitely exploited the crap out of it and, and turned it into a new mechanic, which was really interesting. Um, but yeah, so they need to definitely just keep it calm, play slow, and uh, take these executes as a team and not go for any uh, hero plays. Well, we're seeing right now UT Austin work their way over to B. Let's see if they can get enough of an opening. We'll see how UC, or sorry, not UC, I almost like UC Davis, Cal Poly Pomona <laughs> <laughs> handles this uh, B initiate. Do they have the same timing? Do they have the same recognition that UT Austin had on B side? The zone takes a pre shot. Misses and a small drop down from the T's right now. Somebody's really close to him, but and he's dropping almost all of them. What a <laughs> cleanup! Wow. No what hope. Job. Wow, Cal Poly Pomona. Just... And, uh, and hey, right there, they got the flashbang off. They they timed it out really well. That's what I was saying. I'm like, do they have the recognition? And they do. Once again, man, what's happening? 49. Cobblestone, what, baby. What what is happening right now? I'm, Cobblestone. I'm really worried. Like. I've, I've seen this happen over and over, week after week after week. Like, teams, In fact, it's expected at this point. Out, man. They're not closers. Man. Yeah, I, I, this is definitely going to be a 30-round game. It just it has to be. I, I don't think I've seen less than like 28 uh, for the CSL Cobblestone games. For, you know, for as many teams that don't maybe like the map, they definitely bring entertaining games. And maybe that's why they don't like them. They're very stressful games. And, uh, you know, some people want those clean wins. So, obviously, it's going to be uh, actually just a fast play. And they're actually finding two entries onto this A site. Just fast push up the slope. They played uh, together as a team, not allowing the CTs to find a kill and fall back. So, they just get overwhelmed by the pistols. And, well, they're going to have to force this retake. Two AKs and an off. And Complet goes down as well. It's all down to the opper now in the zone. He pulls out the CZ, goes for the spray. And that's going to be match point for Austin. Winning just in... In the most unfortunate of circumstances for Cal Poly, winning a force buy, or not even, just a quasi buy with tech nines and a few uh, few pieces of armor. And that's very painful uh, if you're Cal Poly right now. Indeed it is. I'm just looking right now. They're, they don't have... They, well, I was about to, I was about to say something really John Madden. -y. I'm like, well, if Cal Poly Pomona loses this round. They're not going to be in great shape going through the rest of this, <laughs> through the rest of this map as they're going to be down uh, 16 rounds. But uh, yeah. in terms of economy, they they can't even like trade out well, win around, and 
be in a great position. So they, they have to grind out, have to hit shots. They're in a tough position regardless, even if they win this round. So we'll see kind of their toughness and their grit here in these last couple rounds. And you're going to have to make sure they focus about as hard as they possibly can to make sure they execute as best as possible. They don't have too much to work with them. Already Ooh, nice, nice trade. flash. Yep. Yeah, nice trade. Yeah, it was kind of, it looked like they could have traded there uh, even more if he had he pushed in. He But he did flash for his teammate and... Uh, that was definitely a good setup. Unfortunately, the T's were ready for it. I'm not sure if they spotted the bomb on Balto. I was actually about to say before the round started that they should just go for another fast play. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously you risk forcing to save again, but even now, they still have kind of the money. They probably could have gone for another full buy had they lost it, thanks to winning with the, such a low investment in the previous round. But, ooh, nice angle by Jordan. He's actually able to drop the T player here in Balto, so... Uh, that's actually going to be a lot of damage. Now it's essentially a 2v4. Balto can't do much. He has to be the support player. He's got a lot of utility, but he's actually committing his entire body. Balto finding one. Otter getting another fruit bowl. That's going to turn it down to a 1v3 zone with 12 HP. This would definitely be a huge clutch and a huge boost to the team morale, but he's going to have to go huge, and that's going to be it. Balto, with only 12 HP, finds a 3k for the round, single-handedly winning the round. And Well, I said that was pretty much a 2v4, but... Balto won make me eat my words, and he's going to clean that up. What a performance by Otter. 34. 34. Jeez. Game one. What a, what a nice start for him. Well, guys, uh, as basically Joey said, I mean, there we have it. Big win for UT Austin right there. Able to close it out and clinch it. Didn't let it slip too far away from them. So we're going to be heading to map two here in just a moment. But before we do, guys, I want to give you guys a big uh, – Shout out for obviously coming tonight and supporting the CSL. And also want to give a big shout out to our sponsors, Asus and Twitch, uh, especially Asus Republic of Gamers. We want to thank them for making a, for, their, for them being a huge part of our season and being a big part of why we can have DreamHack Austin in the way that we have it. If you guys want to win a laptop from Asus or a couple monitors or just some cool gift cards, head over to cstarleague.com or type in exclamation aces in chat and we have a cool little contest going on where if you just make a creative video of any sort whether it's a cast of your game maybe it's a highlight reel whatever the case is submit it we put it on our youtube most views wins basically very it's a very simple contest most views win so it is a bit of a popularity contest but it's really cool let the world see what you do and what your school's about or whatever you kind of have in mind and you might be able to win some really cool gear out of it and you don't have to do much for it so we will be right back guys game two coming up we'll know the map shortly we'll let you guys know in chat until then hang tight music commercial break and all that good jazz be right back
now for an exclusive and another dream collab. Hey guys, this is Mike and Alex. We are the Pegboard Nerds. What's up everybody, this is Grabbits. I'm so excited this week to share with you with a brand new track that me and the Pegboard Nerds have been working on. We hope you guys love it just as much as we do. Here it is, all alone. I hope you enjoy it. I don't wanna love you when you're stoned I feel like I'd be better off on my own Well, I don't wanna lose you in the smoke I feel like I'd be better off all alone 